Hello my quilting friends! My name is Leah Day and welcome back to the Dream Big Quilt Along. This week we're quilting grid lines with either the ditcher ruler or the slice ruler. So let's jump on the machine and learn how to use these rulers to quilt this elegant design. So here is our grid lines design. As you can see, I am stitching this into our inner double petal shapes. So all of the petals that you added an extra set of lines to create a smaller inner petal and an outer petal, it's within these, the smaller ones that we are going to stitch grid lines. And I mostly use the slice ruler for this. It's smaller, it's narrower. I found it easier in order to stitch the designs, especially on a small home sewing machine. But you could either use this one or the ditcher ruler. And the ditcher ruler has extra lines that help you stitch the lines perpendicular, meaning that you first stitch the line straight across one way, then you line up the ruler, and there's some edge lines going in the opposite direction, nice and straight across, and that's gonna help you line those up and be able to stitch exactly perpendicular. So if you like the effect of having little squares in your grid lines, then do it that way. If you like the effect of these little diamonds, you can see here, I use the slice ruler. I think I lined it up Kind of, there's, a, there's an edge line here on the ruler that's kind of at a strange angle. And I just lined that up when I was doing the set, second set of lines and that created that really funky angle and lots of cute little diamonds. Okay, so now that you know how it's gonna work, let's slide over and stitch grid lines into this petal shape. This is in the center, it's a little bit tricky, but I want you to see how I handle the bulk of the quilt. Everything does get easier the further out, the further to the outer edges that you get. Uh, but you know, the center is the part that you have to start on <laughs> and it can be tricky. Now I just brought my thread up to the surface and I've demoed that a couple times. So definitely watch the other videos in this quilt along to see how to do that step by step. And I'm just gonna shift around and kind of give the quilt a little bit of a squish here just to make sure that it's nice and comfortable. If you're ever unsure if the quilt is gonna move smoothly and easily, just give it a little squish and see how it's feeling. All right, so I have learned that planning this out is a really good idea and knowing where to start is also really good because if I start here and stitch a line, well then the next line, basically I'll be able to stitch with the ruler on this side of the machine, but then all other lines I'll have to stitch based off of those I've two that I've stitched and they'll all go this way and the ruler will be in the arm of the machine and it will feel tricky. It will be difficult to do it that way. So instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna travel stitch down a little bit because I do want these lines to run kind of, I want them to run in that direction. I like that direction. So I'm gonna first travel stitch down to this area of the petal. And this is just that little bit of pre-planning that sometimes required in order to get into quilting and especially with ruler quilting, that little extra planning can help you have a better, just a better feel to a whole quilting experience, really. And when you plan it out, find that you just have to do a little bit of travel stitching to get into the right spot. And then now everything's gonna go smoother. Okay, so I've got my slice ruler and you might find, I find this is ever so slightly tippy. There's like, there's a needle plate or something on my machine that it's kind of rocking back and forth. Just try and press it firmly straight down onto the bed, spread out your fingers nice and wide. That's gonna stop it from rocking. And then it's just a push quilt and ruler everything straight through the machine. All right, now I'm gonna travel stitch over a quarter of an inch. And I did experiment with this a, a bit and I found that, you know, of course, if you have a different goal in mind, if you are making a, a fluffy bed quilt or a baby quilt with this Dream Big panel, then obviously you're going to want to do a wider spacing. You could do a half inch, you could do three quarters of an inch, and you just use the lines on the ruler in order to space that. So in this case, I want this to be dense. I'm making a jacket out of my Dream Big panels, and I want that density because it's gonna look better on the jacket and it's gonna have, overall the whole thing will be quilted basically on that same scale and it will all cut out and work consistently. And you can see here, what I'm doing is I'm lining up the edge of that ruler with the line that I stitched before. That's how I'm lining that up. If you were stitching with a half inch space lines, you would line up and you would put the edge line one from the edge on that line that you just stitched. 
And if you want a three quarter inch spacing, well then you just bump it over one more. And so you could just basically add quarters. So there's a quarter there, quarter there, and then there's a quarter on the foot itself. And if that seems really complicated, then don't worry. Just start stitching some lines. <laughs> don't, don't, let it, uh, don't let the math of it bog you down too much. It really is very, very simple. And let's talk about that, the actual feeling, uh, kind of what I'm thinking about and, and how I'm feeling the quilt here and what all of this really entails. Well, basically I want to make sure that the quilt still moves smoothly and evenly. Even though all I'm doing is stitching forward and back, I want to make sure that it's not going to get hung up on anything. When I press the ruler in place, you know, I've got kind of a bulky front here on this machine. I can't see further than right here on the ruler. So I'm just making sure that that looks roughly straight with the stitching lines that are on the quilt. And I'm lining up those etched lines that I can see and the edge of the ruler. So I'm lining up all of that and just leaning back and seeing as much as I can. Might take a stitch or two just to get on track. And then as I go, if I need to, I'm shifting the ruler, I'm pulling the quilt towards me gently with my hands, and I'm just letting that slide and see how smooth and even I move it. And then also how slowly I run the machine, how slowly I'm moving everything. So slow and steady, wins the race. Ruler quilting, you know, it's a form of free motion quilting, but it's not super speedy, you know? We're not gonna be winning races with this. We're gonna be going slow and steady, and that is the key. You can put your foot down, of course, if you feel comfortable, and every time that I'm stitching towards me, that always feels more comfortable than when I'm stitching away. Like right now, I'm gonna automatically slow down because I can't quite see, and I'm adjusting the ruler position as I go, as I stitch further and further up, I'm just wiggling that ruler to make sure that those lines stay a quarter inch apart. Um, and it's just a feeling thing. I think the more that you do it as you get into this, the easier it's gonna feel. And you're gonna really start to get the hang for hanging onto that ruler, for hanging onto your quilt, all of it at the same time going through. And I do think wearing gloves, really, really nice. Uh, and when I don't have the gloves on, I find that the ruler is more slippy and then also my hands are slippy on the quilt. So just pushing everything through, just everything becomes more challenging. Now, one thing I do like to do, and this does take extra time and drives me a little crazy at myself, but I do like to travel stitch back along the edge of my inner pedal and build up thread there. And I do that because just adds that little bit of extra drama. It makes that pedal stand out that much better. I've already got a little bit of travel stitching building up because of the design itself, you know, involves travel stitching there. And I just think that looks good. And then having already cut out my jacket and starting putting, putting that together, I can say that, that where I have done that travel stitching and really building up the thread, it looks really, really good on the jacket. Um, now an alternative, if you don't want to do that, or you, you just find that a struggle, maybe that, you know, being able to travel stitch cleanly is a struggle for you. That's very, very normal, by the way. You could always add that texture at the very end after you have cut out your garment pieces, if that's what you're going to do. And you could do that with couching and a totally different foot. You would use a couching foot and then you could couch decorative yarns or threads, something like that instead. So that's just an idea. If travel stitching and building up thread doesn't seem like very much fun to you, that's a-okay. All right, it looks like I've got a little tiny line that needs to go over here. And this is the thing, you don't have to necessarily do that. You know, it's gonna be such a tiny, tiny line over here on this edge. It's not really honestly worth bothering with, but you know, I'm a sucker for punishment. <laughs> I like the spacing to be absolutely perfect, I do. All right, so yet again, we wanna think about our spacing and how we are going to stitch across the pedal in the opposite direction. Of course, if you like the design and how it's looking, this is just straight lines. You know, parallel straight lines, evenly spaced a quarter inch apart. And if you like that and you're done here, break thread, move on to another pedal. That's a-okay. But I'm gonna turn this into grid lines. So that requires a little bit of planning to figure out the angle of the design and how I'm gonna stitch it so that I have the ruler on the outside of the quilt. So I'm steadily moving the quilt 
from the inside, the bulky spot, I'm steadily moving the quilt outwards and I can keep my ruler in my left hand. And this is not because I'm left-handed. It's because it's far less bulky out here than it is if I try to use the ruler shoved up here in the arm of the machine on top of the quilt too. And this is something I've just picked up on recently. And I realized actually doing this quilt that this is really the first project, first big project, and I would consider it fairly big at 43 inches, first big project I've done with rulers. And because of that, uh, I think that really changes the game when you're working on a bigger quilt. You've got to think about how to manage that bulk in the arm of the machine along with how are you going to fit the ruler in there too, you know? It's, it's a little bit challenging. Okay, and so this first line I think is going to be a little bit on the tricky side. So let me kind of squish things around a little bit, try and get a very good view. I might even actually, let's just rotate the whole thing around. So this is the thing, allow yourself to spin the quilt around anytime you need to. It's not against the rules. It will actually end up saving you time. I know that sounds weird, but whenever you give yourself a really good viewpoint of your quilt and an ability to see the design and plan it out properly, you're gonna save yourself time because that means that you're gonna avoid having to rip anything out. Okay, so if I wanted nice perpendicular straight lines, then I would grab this ditcher ruler. And here you can see I have edge lines that are running uh, parallel with the long edges of the ruler. And I also have these perpendicular lines. These are straight across making nice little squares. So I'm gonna line up those perpendicular lines with the lines of quilting that I've already stitched. And that's how that's gonna go. And I just press that right up against the foot and I'd stitch straight down. If that was my goal to make, fill up this entire petal with a little uh, boxy square grid lines, and that's exactly what I do. If I wanted to do a more funky angle, then I would grab the slice ruler. And this slice ruler, I did some funky things with the lines on it, and it's a lot of fun for that reason. Uh, the lines really are intended to help you cut Dresden plates. Uh, so you can cut different heights and thicknesses and sizes of Dresden plate shapes of petals. Uh, but when it comes to quilting, as you can see, if I line up the straight lines that are running across the end of this ruler like this, you can see how the edge of the ruler is gonna come in here at a funky angle. It's not gonna be perfectly perpendicular to the lines that we've already stitched. It's gonna be at an angle and it's gonna give you kind of a fat diamond shape. Now we've also got this really funky angle here. And if you line that up with the lines that are already stitched, you get an even funkier angle as you can see. So understand there's lots of different ways of doing this. I think I'm gonna grab the ditcher ruler just to get my first line started and I'm gonna stitch this perpendicular. You'll only need the ditcher ruler for the first couple of lines and then you could switch back to the slice ruler because it is smaller and a little bit easier to handle, especially if you mix things around and you end up having to have the ruler in the arm of your machine. Okay, so I got the first line stitched. That first little line is all you need. And then you can rotate the whole quilt back around. I think I'll stick with the ditcher ruler just so you guys can see the difference. And I can swing a whole quilt back around, give it a good squish, flatten it out here. And you can see that I, I sometimes pop my wrist up a little bit. That's just kind of a habit. It's not necessarily all that great for my wrist. Watch out for that. And if you find yourself where a certain body part, like you know your wrist or your fingertips or something like that are starting to hurt, maybe just force yourself to change your positioning. Force yourself to grip it in a different way. So here I'm gonna just move my hand straight down and I'm not allowing myself to do that motion. I'm gonna put my hand down here on the bottom. Okay, so now smooth and steady, pushing it straight through. You can see another reason to have moved my ruler and done that first line to the inside is because really out here, I don't have anything to base that line off of. There's really nothing to go off of. So I had to do that. But now all the other lines can be lined up just like so, lining up the ruler right with the line that I just stitched and sliding the quilt and the ruler all through the machine. And as you stack up lines, you can check yourself, making sure you're not getting off. When you're stitching, this is a quarter inch scale, 
all of those lines should be lining up with etched lines on your ruler, just exactly like so. Uh, if you are stitching with a bigger scale, the ditcher ruler can be really helpful for that because you have so many lines to space that will be very, very helpful. You could do much wider spacing, like half inch, uh, sorry, one inch, uh, maybe even up to two inches. I also have eighth inch spacing here on the other side. So if you wanted to space out like three eighths of an inch or one eighth of an inch, you'll be here forever <laughs> with a one eighth of an inch spacing. But if that's what you're going for, then that can definitely help you out with that. All right, so I'm just gonna continue stitching back and forth, pulling the quilt through the arm of the machine, travel stitching over. A lot of times as I'm travel stitching, I'll travel stitch back and then I'll go over and you can see how nicely that thread is building up there on the tip of that, lead, at that petal shape. It's so beautiful. And whether you finish this as a quilt or you turn it into a jacket, that little bit of travel stitching it really stands out nicely. And another thing that I'll do is if you make a mistake, let's say you travel stitched badly between two lines, well, you can always stitch back over it, throw some more thread at it, and that is gonna hide that little bit of a mistake and just make it that much prettier. Now, I will give you a warning, you know, as far as hiding mistakes and getting obsessive like that, try and avoid doing it for that reason. Adding a little extra thread just to make the petal stand out better is one thing, trying to hide even the tiniest little stitch off mistake can be really the wrong goal to have. Uh, so watch out for that. Don't get to be too much of a perfectionist with this and instead just be aiming to add thread as texture and beauty to your quilt and accept the fact that no one can quilt every single stitch perfectly and that we have to take it one stitch at a time. And it's okay to have mistakes, even if you're gonna turn this into a garment and wear it and have that mistake potentially on your sleeve to be glaring at you every day, it's okay. You know, um, we have to accept our skills of where it is and love it anyway, right? So here we go. As you can see, this is very, very simple quilting. And because of the position in that I have it in, you can see here, I've got the bulk squished up here, but it's very manageable. It's not in my way. It's not in my lap. It's not flopping off the side of the table. A lot of the quilt is to the back of the machine. I'd say most of it is to the back of the machine. And that is working out really, really well. And because the space is so small, it's just a simple stitch back and forth. You know, very slow, little bit of travel stitching. Then I take a second to line up my ruler and then stitch right down. So there we go. That is how you're gonna quilt grid lines. As you can see, stitching the square grid lines, very, very easy to do with the ditcher ruler, but you can do some really funky angles with the slice ruler too. So play around with those. Stitch all of the double petal shapes with grid lines, these smaller inner double petal shapes with grid lines. And then later on in this quilt along, a couple weeks from now, we are going to fill in the outer double petal shapes with feathers. So be looking forward to that. So that's it for this video. I hope you're excited about giving this design a try. If you'd like to know exactly where I stitched this design on the Dream Big quilt, come and check out the Dream Big guidebook available at leahday.com slash dream guide. I share step-by-step -step diagrams for which designs I stitch in which areas on the quilt, as well as extra helpful tips and tricks for getting started and more instructions on what I'm doing with my Dream Big quilts. I'm gonna be cutting these up and turning them into a quilted jacket. So if you'd like extra information, some tips and tricks and behind the scenes information, come and check out that guidebook at leahday.com slash dream guide. Until next time, let's go quilt.